Hello everyone, this week we're talking about backward design and we have Dr. Michelle Ford here who is an online instructor at the Empire State College and uh, I would like to ask Michelle how she designs her courses or any of the activities using backward design. Now just to remind you, backward design starts with um, communicating or identifying objectives first, so you always want to know where you're going. Then you're continuing with um, setting your assessments and designing your assessments, so that will let you know how you will know that you arrive where you where you were planning to arrive. And then your last step will be designing learning activities or any other materials that will be necessary for your learners to get to where you need them to get. So, Dr. Michelle Ford, could you please um, introduce yourself and um, then if you can just mention how you use backward design in your online course design and um, teaching. Sure. Hi, everyone. So, um, just so everyone knows, I teach um, fully all the time in the online uh, modalities. So, the concept of backward design is really important um, in terms of helping learners understand what my objectives are, what our goals are for the course in general. So as, um, as Tonka said, uh, we start with the objectives. And to give you, I think, a better sense of this, I'll start with a concrete example of what backward design is. It might be the easiest way to explain. I teach um, a grief and loss course. And so one of the assignments from that course, we ask students to compare and contrast their own culture with um, another culture that's not their own and to think about how their sort of family response to a particular death ritual compares to and contrasts with that of another culture. So that's sort of the overall learning objective. And then I think about um, the assessment and how, you know, how we're going to get there. Um, the default for something like that, as you might know, is a written assignment. So it's usually a five to seven page essay, something like that. But I really wanted to um, explore how students could we could meet these objectives in a different way. So they're given the option to submit either an essay, which again is the default, or a multimedia presentation. Some students have done videos, some students have done um, audio recordings and submitted PowerPoint presentations. So they have some choice, they have some, you know, they have some options in terms of how they get there. Um, and then to support all of that, the actual module itself has some learning activities that help students start to think through how they might um, how they might do this particular assessment and reach the objectives of the module. So, for example, we have readings in the module that support a consideration of cultures, of how various cultures respond to grief and loss um, and death rituals, how family um, functions differently in various cultures, and then we also have a discussion board. And students, interestingly, um, by talking about their own cultures, they end up teaching each other what it might mean to approach this topic from a multicultural or intercultural perspective. And the whole module is really sort of richly um, drawn, and there's a nice frame around it so that we're meeting the objectives um, in a really thoughtful, deliberate way. I find it helpful as an instructor because it keeps me on task, and students are aware of, of what, uh, what, they, what they need to do, where they need to go, and maybe how they can get there in a thoughtful way. So I find it very helpful in terms of my own pedagogy. Thank you very much. Do you have any, any information about how students perceive that kind, of, that kind of activity, that kind of assessment? Do they like it? Do they not? Do they feel they yeah. learn from it? I do. Um, so we're, you know, predictably assessed at the end of um, every, every term. You know, students are given the opportunity to give us feedback on not only on the course, but also on our, on our teaching. And so they perceive the um, backward design, and of course they don't use that phrase, but what they, they say things like they understood what their um, what course expectations were, that my feedback was consistent with what they understood, that they felt they could um, find some academic success and some um, even, uh, um, and again, they're not using these words, but they have an opportunity for developmental um, progress because they understand how they need to, um, uh, almost the, the course is road mapped for them. So they understand what they, what they hope to get out of it, what I hope, 
you know, they're learning and they find themselves in the course that, and, it, and it's aligned with what the intention of the course is, with what the course objectives are. Wonderful. Thank you very much for, for your time and for your, for your advice. Thank you. Thank you very much.